Hi, Nick. Uh, you hey. you seem uh, energetic. How can you give us an update? How you're feeling? Uh, where your status is? It and also how things uh, have gone for you to run things virtually over, over the past couple of days. Uh, I feel great. Um, just waiting for my test to conti- uh, to come back and get good news. Hopefully, um, you know, uh, virtually as far as everything goes, virtual virtually it went it went really well. I mean, no problems here. I mean, I was just doing everything I do uh, from my hotel room. Now I need to probably go out and get a walk a little bit because I've been in this hotel room for three days. Um, but I've been watching a lot of tape and uh, and and feel good about where we're at right now. Go ahead, John Appreciate Clark, you. and then Dave. Hey, Nick, obviously you seem in much better spirits than the other day. Uh, what's the time frame that you're looking for to try to coach in this game? Would it be tomorrow? Would it be Sunday morning? Whenever they tell me I can. Uh, uh, you know, I'm ready to go. Uh, so they tell me if, it, if it's a minute before the game, I'll be there. Uh, if it's a, two days before the game, I'll be there. So. Uh, when they tell me I can go, I'm ready to go, uh, prepared the same way as obviously as if I was in the building all week. What the is the, the ruling, better. Yeah, what is the ruling or, uh, you know, the rules they have about when, you know, conversations or communications have to be cut off on game day if you're not cleared yet? You're asking if, like, I can have something in Shane and Kevin's ear to be talking to them throughout the thing. I don't think they let me to do that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, I- I'm imagining that if I'm not there, uh, well, I know if I'm not there, I'll still have my uh, meeting with Shane and Kevin like we do uh, before each game uh, in in the locker room uh, before, which takes about 45 minutes. Um, so and then and then from there, uh, I'll just do what the whatever the NFL says is the rule. I don't I actually don't know that yet, but um, I'm thinking I can talk all the way up to, to kickoff, but I, I don't know that for sure. I would, that's definitely something we need to look into and we will look into. Thank you. Go ahead, Dave, and then Bo. And Nick, if you're not able to be there on Sunday, have you thought about what that experience is going to be like for you personally, just having <laughs> to, to watch it on TV? Uh, not really. I haven't really put myself in that situation yet. I'm, I'm playing it. I'm being there. I'm hoping I'm there. I know that's, I know that, uh, that's, that is, uh, optimistic thinking. And so I haven't thought the other way yet. Uh, if I'm home, if I'm, if I'm actually back at the house, then I can imagine that I'm not going to want, uh, I love my kids and I love my wife, but I'm not going to want them around when I'm watching the game. Uh, if it's here in the hotel, no one's around here anyway. Um, so I'll just handle that as, as it comes. Bo and then Mike. Nick, if it's not uh, if it's not too personal, if you are still in the hotel tomorrow, what's the what's the Christmas plan with the family tomorrow? If you're not able to be there, uh, well, we got we got a nice uh, uh, FaceTime that you can uh, you can be with your kids when you're not with your kids, and with your family when you're not with your family, and your wife when you're not with your wife. So, I guess there would be a lot of uh, opening gifts while uh, we were there on FaceTime. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to be there with them. Um, if, if not, then we'll adjust just, just like, uh, we do in football as well. Um, so I, I got a resilient family, family, uh, that, that will, with that adjusts with the, with the tough times and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just adjust if I can't be there. Go ahead, Mike. And then Martin. Hey, Nick, glad to hear you're feeling a little bit better. Um, um, to, oh, to, oh, there was an echo there. Um, when you were putting together your staff, and Kevin was obviously coming with you. Um, it was clear that that you viewed, you know, thought of him very highly. Was there a moment in in Indianapolis, or maybe throughout your time together, that you decided, "Hey, I've got to have this guy on my staff, and I want to have him in a predominant role"? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you always think about that when you're with when you're with uh, different coaches. You're like, "Oh, okay. If I ever get if I ever get a chance, uh, I definitely want him on my staff." Um, and so I don't know if there was an, at a moment, I think what, what all of us do as coaches is your, is your work speaks for itself over and over and over again. Same thing we want with our players, like just the consistency of being the same guy over and over and over again. And, you know, I think that's, that's what Kevin's been is just, has been consistently a good coach. Um, so it wasn't like, Hey, boom, there was a moment I was like, I got to have Kevin. It was just, you know, it was the, you know, quick story about Kevin to, uh, actually is that. I, uh, Kevin was the quality control 
for the Kansas City Chiefs the year before I got there. Um, so in 2008, when I was at IUP, I'm actually wearing an IUP sweatshirt today. When in 2008, when I was at IUP, Kevin was the was the quality control for Kansas City. And then 2009, when I was the quality control, um, Chan Gailey. Sorry, guys, my phone. I'm on a phone this time, so I'm dele- uh, Someone texts me or whatever, I I close it. Um, so bear with me. Um, but uh, Kevin um, was with Chan Gailey, and Chan Gailey was the coordinator. And you know. You know, I, you know, Kevin was out and I was in, you know, because of the new head coaching change. And I remember uh, Chan would be like, hey, call Kevin and, and get this or get, call Kevin and get that. And Kevin was so uh, gracious to me, uh, you know, when I was in his job um, and just, you know, so it just spoke to what type of person Kevin is. And that's kind of why, um, you know, the relationship that I had built with Kevin uh, throughout the years. And, you know, and when we when I got the job in Indianapolis and we were hired wide receiver coach. Uh, Kevin came to mind there just because of a situation that had happened 10 years prior to um, with just how good of a person he is. And then obviously he's a, he's a good football coach, a really good football coach too. So uh, it's just the consistency of, of Kevin and uh, I'm just really glad he's here. And uh, um, I know he'll do it. He'll, if I'm not able to be there uh, with the game management stuff, he'll do a great job. Go ahead, Martin. And then Ed. Hey Nick, uh, glad to see that you're feeling better. Um, I was wondering with, you know, Miles and, and Jordan not practicing all week, I mean, I, I, is it safe to say that's more like of a maintenance thing as far as, you know, just they play Tuesday night coming off injuries and stuff like that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, like like you said, we played Tuesday, so we're not on a typically normal week. You know, we, they're, they have no designation in the game, but they didn't practice today. That's more That's more so about – you know, where we are right now, as far as playing on it, playing on a short week. So um, they'll be ready to go. I'm excited. They're ready to go. It's just best thing for them not to, not to go today and practice, you know, for us to like practice today too, is a little different because on a Thursday night game, you don't, you get more walkthroughs. We had one extra day. We thought it was important to get the, to get some full speed reps today. And that's why we did it. Uh, those guys just needed a, a, a day to, to rest a, a little bit longer. All right, we'll wrap it up with Ed and Zach. Hey, Nick, uh, great to see you back hey, to your yeah. old self here. Uh, you, you look a was lot I, better. Was I that? Y'all are saying like like I was like down and out the other day. Goodness, you look. You look. Did I look pretty, like it? I, shoot. All right. All right. I thought you did, uh, but you, you look <laughs> you look better. You got a better color to your face. Uh, you look a lot better. It. Maybe it's just the phone. I don't know. But um, yeah, <laughs> Mer- Mer- Merry Christmas to you and your family. Um, Thank I, you. I, I too. Thank you. I just, it, there's been a lot of talk about fans booing this week. And, you know, uh, I know Dallas mentioned it hearing it in the first quarter. He said so after the game that it, fans, he hears the fans booing in the first quarter. Jordan Mulata mentioned it today about the players interpreting it as maybe the fans don't like them, and but he understands they're passionate. What's your take on that whole, uh, on this whole booing thing that seems to have grown legs this week? Oh, uh, you know what? I don't, I don't hear much of that. I got the t- double headsets on. Um, I will, you know, I will tell a story, um, about my wife, you know, after we, we played, we played new England, um, in the preseason and we, we had a really bad first half as everybody remembers, uh, if we remember that far back. And I remember saying to my wife on the way home, I'm like, man, they were booing us at halftime. And she said to me, she's like, well, what'd you give them to cheer about? I said, touche. I mean, you're, you're right there. So I got, I got tough love at home as well. Um, I don't, I don't think too much into that, uh, with all that stuff, uh, you know, we have great fans, great support from our fans. Um, I love how passionate our fans are. And, uh, you know what? I'm passionate. I know our players are passionate. So, uh, we appreciate their support and, uh, you know, and we need them this week against the giants, uh, to be loud and to be and like when I, you know, when we, when there was a big third down, it was, it, there was, there was a couple really big third downs in that game and we were on defense and I just heard, like, I actually took my headset. I had a double headset on. I actually took it off just so I could hear the, how loud the, the fans were. And it was great. I mean, that, that, that poses problems and uh, it's great uh, to have the passion of fans that we do. Um, and so uh, again, let, don't get too much. I don't, I don't get too much into that. Just don't hear it that much. All right. We'll wrap it up here with Zach. Hey, Nick, Merry Christmas. Um, as, as far as Kevin goes uh, with the game management, how similar is he to you? How much do you use your instincts or I, I guess your, your gut during the game as opposed to 
what's charted out. And then a second question is the rest of the staff in the clear health wise. Uh, yeah, the rest of the staff's feeling good. Appreciate, uh, appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you as well, Zach. Um, the, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question because there was, there was multiple times in the game on uh, Tuesday night that I did not follow that chart because of the way the game was going. And, and, and you don't like with anything, you don't blindly close your eyes and follow. There is a feel to it. Like, and so let, let's just address a couple of them. You know, uh, we make, uh, Jake makes a field goal, um, you know, and we go up 20 to 10 and uh, they jump off sides and we're, and we, and it, we get it to a fourth and one at that particular time. I think we were out gaining them like 400 and whatever to a hundred something. Right. And I did not want to take points off the board in that particular time because our defense was rolling. The 10 points that they had got up to that point was on short fields. And, and I just, I just knew that our defense playing good. Now I know they went down and scored, but can you imagine that had we not got it? And then, and, and they go down and score and tie the game up when you're dominating the game that much, like the, the chart is there to help and assist, but, we have to do, we have to have a feel to it. It's, you know, we have a chart of, of the plays we're going to run on third down and in red zone and the openers and, and in two minutes, but, but there's a feel to the game that you have to have and that you have to be able to go, to go off. We're not robots in this thing. So, um, you know, we, we, Kevin and I have been in games together where, you know, I think back to, to a game, particularly in 2018, we, we went for it a couple of times and uh against a, t- a team and we felt like oh shoot you know after the game we're like we all talked and we we're like man we should have we shouldn't have went for it there and we we you know whatever and so you know again we were playing a, a quarterback in a, an offense that wasn't doing much against our defense back then and uh you know it was our jacksonville versus indie game in 2018 um and and that was the and, and so you learn from these things that happen um, and you put you try to put yourself in back in these scenarios. Uh, and there's a couple other things in that game, like um, you know, we get a fourth and one in our game the other day, and um, and we go for it, and we and we go, we run that uh, play to we run a toss crack play to Jordan Howard, uh, and Jordan Malata got the holding call, and now we're in a fourth and four. Well, we had just given those we had just on the 41 yard line, we had just given them two short fields, right? We had the interception and then we had the fumble and they, and they turned it into 10 points. I was not and, and what, and so my chart said in that situation, it's a, it's a, it's a heavy consideration to go for it. In that situation, I wasn't going to give them another short field, right? Cause the defense started off in a, um, you know, with a three and out, right. Or maybe it was a, maybe it was a four and out, a four and out, out to start the game. So I knew our defense was amped up and ready to go. And I just didn't want to give them another short field. So again, there was, and there was another scenario in that game that, that I won't, I don't need to talk about right now, but my whole point of even educating and telling you the story is the fact that every game is different. Every game has a feel. It matters who's on the other side. It matters how the defense is playing. It matters how the opposing offense is playing. When you talk about game management, Kevin and I have had so many conversations about this, um, you know, dating back to our indie days. Kevin and I have a meeting every Thursday. Now Shane's involved in it, and a couple other guys are involved in it as well. Every Thursday we have a meeting. Every Saturday we have a meeting to talk about these things. And so you have a chart. You lean on the chart, but there is an element to feel in it. And Kevin's another guy that in the midst of making those tough decisions – or making those decisions within a game, I bounce that off of them. I tell them what I'm feeling in that, and then I see how Kevin's feeling. Very similar. We're very similar. Now, not everybody's exactly the same in every situation. We're very similar in how we, how we think about it. Um, and so he'll do a great job with it because the work has been put in every single day. The work has been put in for over the past four years together over and over and over and over again. He'll do a great job with it if I'm not able to be there. I know I gave you a very long answer. You guys need to get home to your families. I thought that was a good uh, opportunity to educate, though, on on some of those decision makings and how kind of what you're to answer your questions, Zach, of how Kevin and I think similar in that situation.